I'm Dr. Patrick Anderson of Madison Maximize Living. Did you know there are natural alternatives to drugs and surgery that can be quite helpful in managing your health? Well, the United States is the greatest country in the world to have emergency surgery. I, for one, really question if we are not over-medicating ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Skyrocketing costs, drug recalls, and a seemingly never-ending list of side effects leads many people to look at natural alternatives. At the very least, with any illness or condition, wouldn't you be better off being more fit, having better nutrition, less stress, and an optimally functioning nervous system? I certainly think so. Join co-host Stacey Hansen and myself as we bring you natural healthcare news and your questions answered, coming up next. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. This episode, we're going to share with you some natural health care news. And we're also, at the end of the episode, going to answer some of your questions from our viewers. So our first story we wanted to talk about today was about canned soup. Um, the Harvard School of Public Health actually found that eating canned soup dramatically increases levels of um, the endocrine-disrupting chemical. It's called bisphenol A. Um, otherwise known as BPA, um, but urine samples of these people showed that just a serving of canned soup daily was actually associated with a 1,221% increase in this BPA. Um, so they're saying it's really not safe to be eating uh, this. Yes, canned foods, can, the lining of cans has bisphenol A in it, and it has 200 times the allowable amount. And wow. uh, bisphenol A, is, we're, we're, they're working on phasing it out and using something else, but even that isn't tested much. So personally, I really don't use canned foods. I try to go as fresh as possible whenever, whenever possible and really uh, stay away from it. Because bisphenol A is a real endocrine disruptor, and uh, anyone who's having canned food is really pretty high in that in their body. Wow, that is scary. And what does it happen then when you get this, your endocrine disrupted? What happens to you? Well, you're going to have hormone imbalances. So your testosterone, your estrogen levels, those, those are going to be off and that leads to more problems in healthcare. Yikes. So just, just from eating. So what, what have you got? What well, you we've got ditch the toxic sunscreen. You know, when you think about it, sunscreen, we lather on large parts of our body. And that's a, that's a real concern because it all gets absorbed into your system. So. Um, Extra virgin olive oil, uh, based on this, uh, this report, says it has a sun protection factor of 10. It does? 10, just oh. using the, um, the coconut oil, excuse me, and uh, it will have a sun protection factor of 10. And uh, the problem is the Environmental Working Group states that 75% of commercial sunscreens contain toxic chemicals that are linked to cancer and, again, disrupt hormones. So uh, typically they contain retinol palmonate, it's a skin cancer hazard. They contain oxybenzone, which is, we may have seen that on the labels, right. which disrupt hormones leading to cell damage and cancer. And zinc and titanium um, nanoparticles are colorless uh, in the sunscreen lotions and those can get absorbed as well. As well. What's particularly fascinating about this particular uh, report is that uh, a sun protection factor of 10 will uh, give you uh, block 90% of the UV rays. So we think if you went up to 50, it would be so much better, but you only get up to like 95% of blocking really? of, the, of the UV rays. So uh, you don't, th those higher numbers are really kind of deceiving to people. You don't need that higher number. You don't need that much. Now is that broad spectrum, does it say, is it UVA and UVB? Mm -hmm. It is, oh, so that, that's great. Yeah, and, uh, it's, and the, the coconut oil itself is very uh, healthy for your skin. As well. It is. And now yeah. this is just coconut oil or olive oil as well? Uh, olive oil will work uh, well as... It will? Yes. Uh, you might smell a little better than you yeah. coconuts or olive oil. <laughs> Depending on if, what you want to smell like. Um, I had another one too that's um, kind of frightening. Um, alcohol causing at least seven types of cancer. Um, 
So we can get into this a little bit before the break, um, but, but basically what this says is that uh, you, you can't even get away with, with drinking just, just a little. So, right. so we'll have more on that right after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Email Dr. Pat at CW57.tv. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson here. On this episode, we're talking about natural health care news, some of the things that are in the news right now currently. Um, we got into it a little bit before the break, um, but USA Today actually reported that um, alcohol causes at least seven types of cancer, and it doesn't matter how much you're drinking, even if you're drinking just a little bit. Um, it says here that health experts are actually calling for warning labels on liquor. Um, it's finding that it's a direct cause of not just liver cancer, which you may have heard about, but also cancer of the colon, rectum, breast, oral pharynx, larynx, and esophagus. And the highest risks are associated, it says here, with the heaviest drinking, but a considerable burden is experienced with drinkers with low to moderate consumption. It actually found that um, if you drink per day about 2.6 beers, or roughly about three six ounce glasses of wine, you have four to seven times greater risk of some of those cancers. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough news to take because we kind of hear, well, red wine may be okay for you, mm -hmm. but it may be good for your heart, but it doesn't sound like it's very good for preventing cancer. So. There's some challenges with that, so I, you know the take-home advice is, you know, really keep it down, and because uh, it, it, it's hard on your body and it's empty calories, and uh, of course uh, nobody needs any DUIs. Exactly. Well, I've got one here. Uh, Duke did a study on vitamin D can cut cognitive dis uh, decline, and it was a study uh, showing that those that had lower levels of vitamin D in their blood. Uh, were twice as likely to exhibit significant cognitive de uh, decline uh, over those with higher levels of vitamin D. So that's, uh, vitamin D is a, a huge deficiency in our country. Uh, some 70% uh, of people in the northern half of the United States have vitamin D deficiency. And of course, Dr. McCola uh, says if you want to reduce cancer death by 50%, keep your vitamin D in adequate levels. So, uh, and he, you can find his research on uh, Mercola.com uh, on the internet. Um, so, I think that's uh, critically important uh, with, with this. Um, so, the results provide further evidence that vitamin D could have a protective against, uh, effect against cognitive decline and further research is needed to help tackle this problem we're having these days with our elderly patients. And yes. Who isn't afraid of cognitive uh, decline or dementia or Alzheimer's as they get older and yet we know that nutrition, uh, omega-3s, vitamin D, mm -hmm. uh, exercise, we know that adjustments improve brain circulation uh, from a chiropractor and uh, so these studies just support time and time again how important having all the nutrients you need in your, in your uh, body is. And is it ever too late for something like that? Say someone is maybe a senior now, I mean, would it still help them to start it's, this? It's really never too late. The common amount of vitamin D we recommend is about 5,000 IUs, and I've had several PhD instructors in nutrition concur, about 5,000 IUs of vitamin D is, is essential for us. And uh, you get blood tests and see if you, go, if you raise it too high. Uh, but it's actually kind of hard to raise your vitamin D levels. You can take a fairly large amount uh, and not raise them for quite a while. So, but vitamin D is critically important for bone health. Um, even in depression, vitamin D has been shown mm. to be helpful to make sure you have adequate vitamin D to help in uh, depression. So uh, another study, uh, again, vitamin D, if there was one supplement we would give someone, it would be vitamin D. Well, stay with us. We'll have more natural health care news right after this. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Email Dr. Pat at CW57.tv. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're talking about natural health care news today, and we've shared a lot of interesting revelations. Um, this next one that we found um, talks about um, antibiotic prescriptions and how um, it says here. Um, 
nearly one third of uh, those prescribed in the U.S. are inappropriate and unnecessary. This is coming from a report from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. Um, and one of these doctors here in this article is calling it one of the most important public health threats that we face. Um, they say that the biggest consequence, of course, is the diminishing efficiency of antibiotics and the, the rise of these super bugs, um, right. where, uh, you know, and I, I thought this was always something that was going to happen in the future if we continued. It says here that actually many thousands of patients die each year already due to resistant infections that may not in the past have occurred or might have been treated more easily. Right, through the overuse of antibiotics, the, the uh, um, microorganisms adapt and become resistant and then you have to use a stronger one and then they adapt and uh, we're running into problems where there are infections where we really can't treat. Um, so but it does bring into mind uh, what we always say in natural health care is try your best not to use an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. You know uh, vitamin D is very helpful for the immune system. Uh, often people boost their flu resistance just by increasing the vitamin D level uh, for a period of time. Uh, but uh, and then the probiotics in your intestinal tract, the, the microflora in your, are, are killed by antibiotics. And often, if we don't recultivate properly, you, you don't get that right set back. And so, with animals being fed antibiotics, and now you look at a lot of the meats and things that says antibiotic free. Well, some places they're just loading them up without a disease, just loading up the animal with the antibiotics. We get the residuals and we get the effects of that. So, that's that's challenging. So. You know, I'm not saying never take anything as a chiropractor. We don't prescribe or tell people not to take something, but we want to look at the facts and say, you know, if you can get away without taking antibiotics, you're probably better off. And so is our whole system. And sometimes it's a virus and people are still trying to beg their doctors for antibiotics yeah. and it's not going to do anything. Exactly. Next we have a uh, majority of Americans misuse prescription drugs. Um, I was surprised myself when I read this one. Um, coming out uh, just a week ago, Americans misused prescription drugs at a rate of 54% last year. Wow. And um, it's down from 63% from several years ago. So this is where That's people amazing. combine drugs that shouldn't be combined. And this was from actual uh, Quest Labs did uh, blood testing and they found drugs that should not be in their bloodstream at the same time because they're damaging. And Wow. Uh, you know, and they saw on, on the bright side children uh, between 10 and 17 uh, showed 44% uh, last year, um, but down from 70% of kids mixing 70%. drugs wrong, misusing prescriptions. Um, so these are developing young kids, and if you can do anything to keep them safe from drugs, you know, be very careful with that. And in some cases, it's going to be deadly. I mean, if you get the wrong mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we see that with uh, people with alcohol and, and their drugs, and they think they can still get away with it. And, and it also uh, causes uh, brain damage so easily when you mix drugs, so mm. uh, it's, uh, it's a real concern. So uh, anything you can do to stay natural and learn natural ways to stay well is going to do much better for you. And the next study here, uh, medical errors are the number three cause of death in the United States after heart disease and cancer. Uh, May 3rd, 2016, published in no less than the British uh, Medical Journal. Wow, and that's scary because that's something you can't control. These are medical errors by your physician? Yeah, and they're saying in this article that uh, many people have uh, so many doctors looking at them that it's easy for a mistake, uh, a mistake to happen. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a major concern when you see um, uh, uh, this number of them. I mean, these are people's parents, brothers, sisters, kids, and uh, it's a, a major concern again the takeaway for this is stay as healthy as humanly possible by using natural methods. And uh, we have the greatest country in the world for emergency medicine, but you know, if we can stay out of there, we're a lot better off. Let's try to avoid those emergencies. We'll stay with us. We'll have your questions coming up after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Email Dr. Pat at CW57.tv. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. This section is called Your Questions Answered. So these are questions submitted by viewers like you. If you have a question for Dr. Pat, 
definitely submit it. Um, the address for that is Dr. Pat at Madison's with an S CW.com. So definitely check that out. Our first question here is from Jennifer in Evansville. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for the question. Um, so Jennifer asks, is getting adjusted good for you when you're pregnant? It absolutely is. Great question, Jennifer. Uh, there's extra, during the last trimester, there's increased weight gain. There's a hormone called oxytocin that's released that relaxes the ligaments uh, to allow for the birthing process, but it also relaxes the ligaments around the spine. So the spine's fairly susceptible with the increased weight. Uh, it's easy to get uh, injured mm -hmm. at that period of time. Um, the sciatic nerve often can have pressure, uh, and the position of the baby can affect uh, the spine. So it's very healthy for the um, pregnant woman to get adjusted. Uh, we use different techniques. Obviously, we don't have them lie on their stomachs while yeah. we're doing that. <laughs> but many different positions and different styles of adjustments are used uh, to help. And there are specific exercises that help stabilize the back and, and fight back against the, the extra weight gain and the strain that puts on the spine. Interestingly enough, the average woman, Stacy, gets a seven degree curvature to the side with pregnancy. Really? And so being ahead of that can prevent back injuries even after pregnancy because that's many patients coming in through the years would say and I asked them when did it start and they said it during the last part of pregnancy or in the beginning lifting the child and doing things mm -hmm. uh, that's when their back really started to bother them. They haven't recovered because they didn't see a chiropractor and get checked. Good to know. So Jennifer, you may want to check that out. Um, uh, next question is from Jean in Oregon, Wisconsin. Jean asks, uh, Dr. Pat, what sets you apart from other medical professionals? She's wondering why choose chiropractic over more traditional medicine? Well, that is a wonderful question too because you always think there's these chiropractors natural and there's the medicine and they're going like this all the time. Really, you don't have to. What a chiropractor is really saying is if you stay healthy by following what we call our five essentials and things like that, you need less medicine. And uh, we are scientific in our measurements, in our way we uh, have techniques that we do, pre and post tests. Uh, medicine, I don't think, really understands us, but well, I don't think there's a chiropractor out there who would say you don't need medicine, uh, especially the emergency medicine. But our method is to say, take care of your body. It's, it's ama amazing how it functions. Give it what it needs and you'll stay healthy and you'll need less and less drugs and surgery. Very interesting again. And now this one um, is from an anonymous source, um, but it's, it does um, ask, what can I say to my 84-year-old mother to motivate her to do a little light exercise? Isn't that sweet? <laughs> well, as we get older, we don't realize just how much more sitting we do. And sitting is hard on the spine. There's 30% more compression on your disc and your back when you sit than when you stand. And a lot of times people don't move enough. And they don't realize if you want to keep your mind working, it isn't just crossword puzzles and card games. That's only a small part of it. Much, much more powerful for brain stimulation and body uh, strength is moving your body. So how would you start? Try to get into a pool, um, do some things where you're moving your arms, go for short walks. Um, if you have to use a walker, use a walker. Interesting, interestingly enough, my mother is 96 years old and she goes for a walk for 22 blocks to go to the grocery store. She wants to go out almost every day and get her walk. 96 years old. And she's she walk, with, the with a walker. Back. She puts it back. She puts it back on her, on the it, walker. On there, yeah. And everybody in the world stops and asks her if she wants a ride. Actually, <laughs> she just wants to walk. And she says, "No, I love walking." Oh, that's wonderful. See, in case in point, and she's—I imagine she's very healthy. Yes, that walking, that move, motion is life. Is really the thing. You, you've got to move your body. So any way you can stimulate, take that. Take your grandparent or your mom or dad for a walk. Take them for a walk, and you know, make it fun. Anything to cause movement. Play catch. Uh, anything to get movement in the in the body uh, stimulates the brain and builds health. Good to get some bonding in while you're yeah, while you're absolutely. stimulating your health too. Well, stay with us. We have more right after this. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living? Email Dr. Pat at cw57.tv. Thank you for joining us on Natural Healthcare News and your questions answered on Maximize Living. If you have questions you would like answered on our show, please email us at drpat at madisonscw.com. Unfortunately, we will not be able to answer all of your questions on air. Information is vitally helpful in making good choices for you and your family's health care. 
One of the best choices you can make is to get a chiropractic checkup to make sure your structure and nervous system are fully functioning. Though pain often brings a patient into a chiropractor, truly the best care is to check imbalances before they turn into problems. If this makes sense to you, call 608-833-1282 right now for a checkup. For Maximize Living, I'm Dr. Patrick Anderson. Until next time, live well and God bless. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Email drpat at cw57.tv.